mm -hmm. when the Creator uh, is, has it laid out in front of us. So you always did believe that it was illogical, it didn't make sense that everything in this creation just created itself, that it just came into being and there wasn't a Creator behind this? Yeah, it, it just, I always thought that there was something turning the wheels. And I used to tell people, when people asked me to explain, this was before Islam, what I thought of, of God or, you know, of, you know, a higher power. I said, you know, just as we look in a microscope, you know, we look at the little microorganisms uh, under the lens, they can't really c perceive exactly what we are. They may, they may have their function of how to interact with us and know how to do that, but they're not going to be able to comprehend, you know, you know, who is Greg, you know, like, what is he, what is he like, you know, they, they're just, they're not made to do that, just in the same way, like, we're not made to, we can't fully comprehend God, it's just not within our, our limits, you know, we can't do that. So, if someone told you and said, you know what, this whole prophethood thing, God sending messengers to guide us, a creator, this is something man-made, and just to, you know, keep the masses under check, how would you respond to this? Now, have you come across something like this, if somebody... Yeah, uh, I've, I've come across people that, that have that viewpoint, and it, it's kind of silly to say that, because when you look first at the, the, the timeline of, of prophets, at least in the Islamic faith, uh, we believe in all the prophets and they all came with the same message, you know, which is worship one God alone, you know, and, and, and believe in me as the messenger, you know, from the time of Abraham to Ishmael to Isaac to Noah. And actually interesting fact is if you look, you can see a, a heritage tree of all the prophets, that they're all interlinked. But, you know, the same thing, if you were to say that, oh, this is man-made, then you could say the same thing that George Washington wasn't real. You know, how how you're just going to rebuke one, one aspect of history and then accept another? Are you saying that all of history is, is falsified? I mean, what's, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. You know, history isn't, ac isn't true? Like, so it doesn't make sense. Like, how are you going to say that this is, is fake, this is man-made, but this aspect of history is true? Yeah. Tell us, uh, Greg, now in your interaction with this blonde-haired, blue-eyed Muslim, you had mentioned before that he had talked about logic and faith coinciding. Go into depth a little bit in this. Um, logic and faith, I mean, you, before we talked about blind following and how it shouldn't, shouldn't dictate your life. Uh, in Islam, there's aspects which you have to accept, which you can't perceive, like under, perceiving God and perceiving angels. We can't perceive what exactly these are in detail. Mm -hmm. But there are other aspects which are very strong, and you can look into you know, logic uh, and see from a logical standpoint that, that it makes sense. Like I said before about the timeline of the prophets, like is it coincidental that all these people came throughout time saying the same message over and over again and having strong proofs despite what some people might you know think as a man-made thing these people did live and they existed and they did things you know uh, there were miracles that were performed and and there are you know recorded documents of these people um, you know and in regards to to more of a, a small aspect is you know, in Islam, like I said, everything is, is everything is covered, every aspect of your life. And, for instance, how to eat. You know, within Islam there is the haram, which is what's forbidden, and there's the halal, which is what it's allowed. Um, and in Islam, there is an allowed way to eat and a not allowed way to eat. You're supposed to eat with your right hand. You're not supposed to eat with your left hand. And Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, he used to eat with his right hand and he used to eat with, uh, if I'm correct, these three fingers. Now, from, you know, a, a layman's perspective, you say, oh, well, you know, this is just, this is what Muhammad did, you know, so we should do it. But uh, recent scientific discoveries actually show that on the tips of these two fingers, you have enzymes which aid in digestion. Um, so... Is that, you know, is that just a coincidence or, you know, is there some logic behind that? You know? So this is a, just a minute, a small detail, but what are the bigger scopes now? Do you have a system of life that you live by from A to Z? You don't have to 
guess like you know what my purpose is here what I need to do where am I going what happens when I die which is a reality rich poor fat old American African we're all gonna hit the grave so do you know now do you have a system does Islam provide you with a complete way of life on how do you live from A to Z yeah and everything's covered um, you know how you you can conduct yourself amongst people how, how you dress uh, you know the the appropriate relationships and the appropriate relationships. You know every aspect that you could think of is covered, and you know it can it can help very much. You know if somebody has this as is a, I used to say Islam is like the handbook, the instruction manual for people, because we didn't create ourselves and we don't really know our full potential. I mean there's a lot of uh, miraculous feats out there that human beings do and, and we're, we haven't really been able to tap into this because we don't really know ourselves that much mm -hmm. and here's a, a perfect instruction manual of how to live your life uh, the way that God wants you to live your life tell us now let's go back to uh, the encounter that you had and what actually so you went back you started researching you started looking into all the different religions you didn't want to just jump into something uh, blindly, you wanted. What were you looking for? Evidence, proof, uh, authenticity. What were you? What was the criteria that you were looking for to establish that this is indeed not man-made? Because we don't want to follow something that's man-made. We want to make sure that it's from the Creator. So, what criteria did you have, and what had you jump over to accept this way of life? Um, you know, I don't think like that wholeheartedly. You know, I was on a mission like you know, this Islam, I'm, I might do it, I might not do it, yeah. you know, I was just kind of looking into it, you yeah. know, just, you know, I don't really know much about this religion. I did a packet on Islam in, in high school. I, I, until after I became Muslim, I realized that I had done that packet. I didn't even think about it at the time. It was just yeah. schoolwork, you know. Um, so when I actually d devoted time into it, uh, you know, one of the, some of the things that I looked into were the authenticity of the Quran. Um, because I thought that was an aspect that was very important. You know, the fact that the Quran, 1,400 years later, it remains unchanged in the Arabic. Um, and, you know, also, like I said before, the scientific and historical uh, proofs, these things very, they intrigued me a lot. You know, historically, the lineage of the prophets and their stories uh, and the miracles they performed, and the fact that it all intertwines together um, you know, and, and scientifically, you know, like I said before, with the, with the fingers, and there's many, 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 many verses in the Quran that, that talk about things that were unknown to human beings until recently. You know, the Muhammad, peace be upon him, he talked about how mountains were set in the ground as pegs. You know, how does an illiterate man 1,400 years ago in a desert know about this I, I don't even think it was discovered, but maybe a hundred years ago. I, I might might not be accurate on that, but so the authenticity of the Quran. That was one point that it was, it is to this day unchanged. It's the same as it was recited then. Today you don't have multiple versions. This book, that book. You were impressed by that. The different scientific facts. You mentioned uh, something on the uh, mountains, which we have the uh, human development, the embryos in there. You yeah. have so many different things on the creation that it's amazing that there's no way that a man could have just concocted these things. Yeah, and it's also reaffirming that which came before it. Muhammad, uh, the revelation, the Quran, it doesn't talk about this as being something new that like that everything else is, you know, rebuking anything. Actually, in order to become Muslim, you have to believe in, in, in Noah and you have to believe in Moses and all the previous prophets. Jesus. And Jesus. Um, you know, you have to believe in Abraham. And you have to believe, you know, that these people were prophets and that they did come with revelation. So, you know, like I said, like, from a timeline standpoint, it just makes sense. It's, I don't know, most so, recent. So this, it made sense, it fit, and now what was that turning point? Did someone give you an invitation? Did someone say, you know, look, uh, this is what you need to do. Uh, Muslim, you got to jump in the back, get baptized. What was the procedure that you went through? What was that turning point, the situation that you accepted submission and surrender 